Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, you guys, to AG University Podcast. You are in for a treat today. I have Amanda Merritt coming on. And if you guys caught my Angel for Hire podcast, she was the TikTok video that I saw that inspired that terminology. So we go so much deeper. And she really brings just such a level-headed perspective of all things spirituality, but really still enjoying just having a human experience and trying things like we sprinkle in a little bit of sober curious content, which you guys know I have been hitting this month. And she brings such a beautiful perspective on top of giving so many amazing intuition tips and tricks. Like there are so many things that you can try immediately after listening to this episode. We kind of went all over the place but in the best way possible. And we talk about intuitive eating and just feeling what it feels to feel a true yes or a true no, really strengthening that intuition in your body, which is what Aging University is founded on here to connect you guys with your intuition and to show you ways to strengthen it so that you can always consult yourself first before looking outside and looking out all of the information because there's just so much on social media. It really does get so overwhelming sometimes. So I always want this to be a place that you come back to and you check in with yourself. And Amanda Merritt is the queen. She is an intuitive coach and her clientele is CEOs, celebrities, high performance leaders. She's someone that has been in this space. I believe she said she's been doing this for nine years and she just has so much wisdom on what it takes to really take your beliefs and your manifestation and everything to the next level. And I know that she works with really, really amazing, important people. She's a queen. She is a dream. Without further ado, you guys, Amanda Merritt, welcome to the show. You guys, welcome back to AG University. Today we have a very special guest. Amanda is in the house. And I'm like, go ahead and just say welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Let's hello. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> We're so excited you're here. So the backstory, I mean, I haven't told you this because I wanted to tell it to you live. The backstory is that a few weeks ago, I recorded a podcast episode called like how Angel for Hire, How to Hire Angels. Mm, yes. And I saw your video. I was at the airport. I saw your video like very briefly in passing and I realized you were the person that like gave me those words, Angel for Hire, but I realized I had been doing it for like ever. And yeah. I get on the mic, I record, I'm like, you guys, I just saw this creator. She was in Nashville, but I didn't save the video. <laughs> and so I was like, I just saw this video and I recorded this whole episode talking about how I've realized I've been doing this. And like, you gave me this vocabulary, Angel for Hire. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, I'm gonna find the video and put it on my AG University page. So I went back, I did, Angel for Hire, if you search that term, a lot of stuff actually does come up. Cause I was like, I've gotta find this girl. I've, I've gotta find this ray of sunshine. Anyways, I found you shared the post and then we connected and here you are. So that's kind of the backstory of how everyone's been along for the ride on this journey of us getting connected. Now we're here. I love it. I feel like it's for a higher reason too, because like we have so many parallels in yeah. our lives, which is so funny. We really do. I know you, you yeah. tell them a couple of parallels we've, we've hammered down yeah. so far. Well, she left Nashville. I moved to Nashville. Yeah. Uh, you did styling. I didn't actually do styling, but I went to school for apparel, merchandising, and design. Oh. I have a dachshund, wiener dog. Your family wiener has dog wiener, family. wiener dogs. We're both blondes, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're both into this work, and I just, yeah, we're both into angels, which I feel like is a, a topic I'm obsessed with talking about. So I love that that brought, me, brought you to, brought us together. I know. Okay. Yeah. So tell us how you got started connecting with your angels. Like take us back. You can go back as far as you want, but I want yeah. to hear just kind of your evolution because I feel like yeah. everyone here is stepping into this journey. So tell us what it looks like for you. I have always been obsessed with angels from as long as I can remember. You know, I grew up in Catholic religion and totally respect religion. It's just not something that resonates anymore with me. Uh, just since my gifts have blown open and all of that, and I just have different a different way of you know connecting with God still. God, mm -hmm. God is still someone I call my higher source God. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's important to like whatever you call your source God infinite doesn't really matter. Right. Um, but you know I've always yeah I've always had this fascin fascination this obsession with angels like even for as long as I can remember I always believed in them and believed in the magic, and I remember as far as I can remember, because it's so hard to, to remember like the first moment necessarily. But I remember just, you know, the gateway into a lot of this for me was um, through like angel cards. Mm. And so 
there was a teacher who no longer teaches. You probably know who I'm talking about. They had decks and decks of angel cards. And I remember probably back in 2009, 2010, getting my first angel card deck. And I had literally almost every deck on, like I had physical decks, decks on my phone, decks on like so many decks, even on, I think my Blackberry I had a, back in the day, I think. <laughs> I had one on my BlackBerry. I'm like, is that, is that accurate? Did they have that? But I swear, I see a vision of myself and when I was living in Florida and I became obsessed and I didn't tell anybody because at the time I felt like it was so out there in my head. I'm like, you know, most people believe in angels. A lot of people believe in angels because it is a part of even religion and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I started to really connect to them in that way. It was just pulled, pulled to it. And, you know, quickly over time and looking back, I even understand now that I really do connect with the angelic realm that I, you know, there's certain pe people on this planet who actually are angels, who are earth angels, who are here to spread this frequency and this energy. Mm -hmm. And I quickly realized that I was one of those people that was meant to bring this frequency on the planet, but also help people activate it inside themselves, which I've never said that before, which is crazy. I so love that. Not in that way. You know, it's like bringing the angelic frequency because part of my purpose, so I do transformational coaching and intuitive coaching for leaders, entrepreneurs, and public figures. And, um, and so I have them all working with angels, which is like kind of, it's new to them sometimes too. It's a piece of the work of the transformation is working with angels. So yeah. So, but I started to task things to angels probably back in 2010, 11, 12, because some other leaders were talking about working with angels. And I was like, well, let's see how this could work for me. There's a book. I don't want to take full on credit for this because there's other amazing leaders too. Jean Slater is one of them, Hiring the Heavens. She's, if you've read that book, that's a really, really good one. If you want to get more insight into it, Sonia Choquette um, and some others. And so I remember just starting to hire like normal tasks out, everyday tasks out to the angels and miracles started happening. Things started showing up. People started showing up on my journey. Uh, challenges started ironing themselves out and I became obsessed. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's something to this. Like not only can we just ask the angels for support in our lives, but we can actually give them specific tasks to help us with. So that's actually one of my favorite ways to now attract, create, manifest, in our lives and in our businesses. I, I, yeah. I'm, I am obsessed. I, I want to share one experience I had, and then I would love for you to give them an example too. Cause I love to just give like some <laughs> tangible examples of maybe a time we've hired an angel. And I, I don't think I included on the podcast uh, that I recorded before. I don't know. Sometimes when I tell people stories and talk on the podcast, it all blends into one conversation, but I flew to after I watched your post because I realized that I was doing that, but I wasn't necessarily saying like, I'm going to hire an angel. Yeah. I would just connect with my angels because that's what it really, the Akashic Records for me is doing angel readings. It's connecting me to an angel realm. It's the realm that I feel so incredibly safe. And yeah. so it's just kind of my like playground space. And so I like to connect with those same light beings outside of readings or doing, you know, Akashic records. And so I always will talk to them like, this is what's going on. Like, can you help me out? And you know, just really have like a conversation. But then I love the idea of hiring. What if I hired a, like a specialist or a specific yeah. angel that's here because I am always shown anytime I do readings with people, like if they have a spirit or an angel or someone that's watching over them, they're like, hello, tell her to like communicate with us. <laughs> like we are here to help her and she's not setting intentions or giving us any direction. And like, we're here, you know? So yeah. I was like, once I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm really going to play with this. So after I saw your video with angel for hire, my first kind of big one was I flew to Santa Fe and my bag got lost. It was really weird because it was like, it ended up in Dallas and I didn't even fly through Dallas. Like I flew through Atlanta and somehow my, my luggage was lost. I was only in Santa Fe for like two days too. And I was like, oh no, shoot. And I, I and it was such a small airport that we landed in. I'm like, this is just going to be a nightmare. It wasn't like a big operation or anything. And I did, I was like, you know what? I didn't even worry the slightest. I immediately said, I'm going to hire an angel to help me locate my bag and bring it back to me. And I literally did not worry. I let it go. I went to sleep. I was like, I've got, I'm just going to wear my little cozy robe. And I woke up at 6am and my bag was there. Of course it was. And I was like, yeah. 
<laughs> the angels are capable of straight up miracles, like literally straight, straight up miracles. And how we activate the support is through our belief through believing, you know, there's all of these unknown angels, like available angels that are just waiting around asking for our, for us to ask them for support with anything that we need, you know, cause so some of the common questions is, can they help with this? Can they help with this? They can't intervene on other people's free will. We don't want to do that. Um, cause other people have free will. So we don't want to do it for like a malicious reason or for our egos reason, right? Of like, get this person to fall in love with me or like something like that, you know, right. but, but right. Cause some people ask that on TikTok, and I was like, we don't want to do that. Like we, that's where we want to like take a look with it to do the other work. Um, right. But for things like that, oh my gosh, uh, bring clients to you. Like I have an angel who's my recruiter who brings the right clients to me, soulmate clients. Cool. No. Um, so yeah. And what else can we use it for? Bring your soulmate together. I had, oh my gosh, this is the craziest story. I can't say the name just because I can't right now, but maybe I'll tell you separately uh, or later. Um, yeah. But I kept having this person come into my dreams before I moved to Nashville over and over again. And when I, like someone that I know of, and like someone who's a musician. And when I came here for my birthday in January before I moved here, and I've had other bunch of other people too come into my dreams too. And that was part of the reason why I was knew I was supposed to move here was for like people I'm supposed to help and like connections and just who knows, love, whatever it is, you know. Um, but when I came here on, on my, I made a list of like what I wanted to have happen that weekend. And I hired an angel for each thing. And I was like, man, it would be really cool if I met like this, this person that's come into my dreams before. Like, it, wouldn't it be cool if, and I wrote down like a few things for the weekend of like, you know, my event planner for the weekend for my birthday. Like, let's like put us in touch with really, really, really cool people, new friends, all this stuff. And like, basically everything happened, including meeting that person. And the no, this is, it's really, really crazy. Like it's really, and it was on my birthday, which was even more magical. So, and the thing is with this, when you work with the angels, you wanna follow your intuition. You wanna make sure you're paying attention because sometimes we have to take action too on things. It'll be like, go here, this or that. And it might seem unrelated. It's not like you're trying to chase down the manifestation. You're just following your intuition. So I was, um, the first time when I was staying at the, at the one in downtown Nashville. So I was sitting on my bed and my morning, the, that morning of my birthday, I was like, okay, what do I wanna have happen this like weekend? And whatever. Um, so actually a few days prior to my birthday, so I set intentions. And so when I met that person, I, I kept getting guidance to rent a car, rent a car, rent a car. And I'm like, why? Like there's, I had friends picking me up. I'm like, why do I need a car? And they're like, you're going to drive around Nashville. My guidance, my angels were like, you're going to drive around Nashville this weekend to like, just get in the energy. I'm like, why? They're like, yep. And you're going to go like tour a home. This I'm like, why I'm not moving here. Like, you know, at the time. And they're like, yeah, you're going to just pretend like you're getting in the energy of this space, so like, you know, for opportunities and meeting people and just getting out. And I'm like, okay, fine. So I rent, I had a car to road, which is an app to row. I had, so I had a car delivered to me and I'm like, thought I was only going to rent it for a day. And they're like, nope, you're going to extend it by another day. And I'm like, I don't know why, but okay, you know? And so I woke up on my birthday and I was like, man, I'm feeling a little pasty and we're going out tonight for a concert and my shirt's white. And I was like, I feel like I need to go get a spray tan. And I was like, let me, I'll just go down and get like the mitt and do the mitt. And they're like, you're not getting a mitt, like go get a spray tan. And I'm like, okay. So I find a place that lit up. I still go to them today. I love this tanning place. Um, so I went there, drove there, got a tan. And then I look up and I was like, it looked like the person that had been, like I've had a few dreams about. Uh, so I took a, uh, a photo of this dude walking down the street and I was like, sent it to a friend. And, uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, um, doesn't this look like this person? And at the same time, I have a screenshot of this. And at 11.22 a.m. and at the same time, I get a text from one of my past clients. And she's like, hey, this person just uh, showed up to the restaurant that I'm like at right now. And yeah, at 11.22. What? And it happened to be five minutes, five or 10 minutes from the place. So I was like, holy shit, that's a sign I have to go. Like, just, yeah. you know, not be a creeper, but like, obviously I'm not like a creeper or a fan girl. I was like, this is magical. Yeah. Like they yeah. orchestrated this. I couldn't have done that myself, you know? Yeah. 
And so I um, quickly got my spray tan. I was like kind of shaking because I was like, holy shit, like clearly when I saw that person that looked like him walk down the street was like almost felt like a soul visitation too, kind of in a sense because it's like, I looked back, the picture came up as a memory the other day and I'm like, that really does look like that person. Um, And so I was shaking and I'm like, I had to go to this restaurant literally with no bra on, like no underwear on in my big sweatpants tank top, like a hat. And the girl's like, don't put a hat back on. And I was like, shit, we have to put a hat on after this spray tan. Like, I'm like, you know, you're not supposed to get the, you know, the forehead lines and I was like, we'll cover it up with makeup. Like I, I cannot show up with like, no bra. No, I cannot, I at least have to have a hat on for this. My hair was wet too. Cause I didn't want to like wash my hair after my spray tan, you know, and get like soap down your body. Okay. So I ended up going there immediately immediately like we smiled at each other and then we talked we talked we talked we ended up talking (laughs) this is so cool wait yeah we ended up talking and saying hi and i was like soul family that person is totally like soul family just because of the amount of times they've shown up in my dreams like i don't know why but like you know it's just cool also i feel like the story's not over yet you know when was this it's not over i I don't feel like it's over either (laughs) I'm like so invested in this story. Also, you have to tell me who it is off air. I'm I'm so I'm invested because I don't feel like it's over. But I also it's not. I love that. Wait, so how did the uh, how did the car come into place? You just needed it to be able to drive in, or did you ever get a little more like clarity on like touring touring the houses or guiding? I feel like I needed the car so that because otherwise, like, would I have gone? I have chills. Yeah. Would I have gone to the restaurant? Like, would I have gotten there quick enough? Like, would I have, you know? Um, so it was wild. And I'm like, the angels did this. And and I honestly, when I put it down, I let it go. I wasn't attached. I wasn't like trying to will it in my experience. I wasn't trying to manipulate the universe. Because I'm You're like right. against that, like anything that's forceful or I'm like anything that's of the purest and highest intention, I'm just going to play. And and for me, when, I, when I'm in that vibration of just play with the universe, shit happens so much quicker because we're not in resistance. We're not attached to an outcome. We're not trying. I was just like, wouldn't it be fun if, like it was almost that. Like, wouldn't it be fun if that person, I could meet that person while I'm here for like three days. I was only here for three days. The angels had a short fucking window to make this happen. And like, what are the odds that it happened on my birthday? I mean, unbelievable, a miracle only. That's the only and explanation. I, I, right. And then I sat at the bar at this restaurant and um, like people around me were like, oh, why? Like, it's your birthday. Where? And then like, let's buy, they bought me my brunch. That person didn't buy me my brunch, but the guys at the bar, it was just like really magical. Like the angels really orchestrated a lot that weekend. And then also too, I met some of my best friends out that weekend too that live like in Leapers Fork, some of my really good friends. I met them that weekend too. Oh my gosh. Wow. Uh, that is, that is a really magical story. And I love that you're I love that you're giving this example because I think that so many people here or like in this space with us listening are all looking for maybe some more like soul connections or soul friends or whatever that is. And I haven't even really thought to do that, like to bring yeah. in some new connections, you know, in Florida and really hire an angel for it. That's such a good idea. I love yes. that. Yes. Hire an angel. Just say like what you want. Give them what you want, you know, and and you can just say like you want it to feel. I always like to start with when you're trying to manifest something for me, I like to say how I want to feel first from the experience. Like, you know, you want to feel supported and met and like authentic. Like you don't have to put a mask on, right? Like we want to be able to have real conversations with our friends and not feel like, you know, we have to be perfect all the time or this or that, you know, like people you can really deeply connect with, you know, Um, because I've done that too, you know, even moving here, I'm like, didn't know anybody except for a couple of people, a couple of clients, past clients and things like that. I didn't really know anybody. And yeah, I've been meeting a lot of really cool people in magical ways. Like I sat down at an, at a, well, one of my, one of my friends passed me this event. She's like, you should go to this female entrepreneurs event. And I'm like, yes. So I always trust my intuition. My body lit up from it. I get mm-hmm. yes. I get no. Like, mm-hmm. like, in my system, I've trained my intuition and anyone can do this. You tell your body t- to respond with a yes or a no. And to me, a yes is like, I get it immediately. So I just, 
I just know. Like, you know, if someone's lying to me, I usually know. I mean, I'm human too, so we're not perfect. But like, you know, when I get shown something or someone gives me even guidance, like another intuitive or something, I get a yes or a no if it's accurate. Like mm -hmm. my, my system tells me, you know, when I'm house hunting, I walk in a house, I get a yes or a no. I trust that feeling with people all the time and in dating and friendships and all these things. I'm like, yep, nope, yep, nope. <laughs> so I, you can ask. So even ask your angels, hire an angel to help tune your intuition to a place where you can trust it more. And like your job is to follow that feeling, which sometimes we don't always want to follow that damn feeling because is that what we want? But follow the feelings. The more you follow it, trust it, no matter what, it will lead you in the right direction. So she sent me that event and I was like, yes, we have to go. And I sat in the front row because I'm a hyper ass. So I was like, get me right in front. Um, and so I sat in front and this woman sat next to me, who now is one of my really good friends, Lauren Lowry. I don't know if you know her, but she's a, a news anchor locally, but she's a wonderful woman. She has a podcast too. Cool. Okay, um, yeah, I'll we'll connect with her. We, yeah, I'll connect you guys. She's amazing. She talked to me for two seconds and she's like, I need to get your number. I want to welcome you into Nashville. Now she's like one of my best friends. She wasn't even there for more than like an hour. So the so fact that we cool. met, it was just like the universe brought her to me. And then I met a lot of other people through her. So this shit does work. Just trust it too. If it, Even if like you're working with an angel, you ask for it. It doesn't happen in your exact timing or in the right moment. Like you, faith and trust that it's happening on your behalf. Like kind of like give it to the angels and then trust that they've got it. Don't try to control the process. Oh, <laughs> I'm like so lit up by this conversation. And I want to also just go back a little bit because I love how you're like, I've trained my intuition system. I talk about this all the time on my podcast. Obviously I told you before, AGU is a school for connecting us to our intuition. Yeah. And really that, yeah. that, you know, that feminine knowing that's inside all of us. Yeah. And yeah. I, every time I do a reading in the Akashi Records, I always show how like our intuition is like a muscle. It just needs a little bit yes. of practice. Yeah, or, like, I it's, see that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm and like, it's going and, to the gym. You wouldn't expect yes. a pop and booty after one squat. You got to squat that shit every day if you want to keep yeah. it, you know, say with intuition. Yes. Yeah. So do you have any advice for maybe someone who's feeling a little disconnected from their intuition? Maybe just a good place to start. For me... I'll say is first make sure that you're, you know, meditating every day. Even if it's just for a couple minutes, cleanse your energy out because there's so much static and noise and smoke and mirrors in the world right now and in the collective. And sometimes it's easy to get clouded to our intuition when we're consuming a lot of other things and not, you know, tapping into our own channel of source and guidance. And the best way we can do that is, well, one way is through, I like to make sure I'm meditating just to cl like clear the, to clear the air a little bit. And for me, like my portal towards my highest intuition, my highest self is through the heart space. That's the quickest way for me to get in. And so in a practical terms, cause there's many ways we can do that, but like an easy practical term for me is like in the morning, like focusing on something that I love, like to get me there, like get me in the heart's frequency like listening one day it might be like listening and my, my guidance like a song might come in to listen to to put on that like I love that moves me or like I got my little wiener dog in my lap like just oops can't even see her she's right there um like looking at her face giving her a hug and just like seeing her cute little tail wag and you know finding a way to get into the heart space for the day and you know for me like again it is a muscle to flex but I find that like just getting to know what a yes and a no feels like in your body is also a good way to like connect to that before you start your day. So here's another practical tip that's easy for like people who are new to this or even people who are like masters at this because sometimes we all need the simple things. Yeah. Is, um, like for the day, I'll be like, okay, what does a yes feel like in my body and what does a no feel like in my body? And start with a fact like, okay, my hair is blonde. How does that feel? <laughs> Close your eyes. I know it sounds silly, but it's like, yeah, that's like a fact. My eyes are blue. My hair is blonde. My name's Amanda. That's what a yes feels like. It's strong. It's certain, right? It's like, it's a fact. And like, what does a no feel like? My hair is black or, you know, I drive a blue car. And it's like, something feels just ugh, like a little off about that. When you say that, it's like not true, right? So get familiar with the feeling of like what the certainty is what the yes is and like what the weird kind of smoky feeling is that's how it feels to me it's almost like staticky 
you know, yeah. and then take that feeling with you throughout the day and start practicing with it. Right. Like even when you're going to order, I do this shit everywhere. Cause I'm crazy is, um, I love it. Even at restaurants, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I want to be able to know how something's going to taste before <laughs> I order so that I always am happy with what I get. And now I, I literally, I know how things are going to taste sometimes before they order. I'm like, that soup is going to be fucking delicious. Even though it sounds weird, this asparagus crab soup at Siesta Key Oyster Bar. I was with my family. I was like, I ha we have to get the soup. Like they're telling me we have to get the soup. I taste it in my mouth. I'm like, I taste the butter. <laughs> I was like, it tastes really good. And I was like, I asked the waitress, I was like, is the soup really good? And she's like, oh, it's to die for. And so we get the soup and we all licked it, our bowls dry. And I was like, see, it works. <laughs> I am obsessed with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, could you tell us more of how, if you um, integrate that, I love talking about intuitive eating and all the things, like if you integrate with like how, like knowing what your body needs too. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's a really good question right now too, because our bodies are going through a lot of energy upgrades. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure we're listening to our bodies and asking it what it needs before we, not what we think we want, but what we need. And so I have to do this. You know, some days it's like, girl, I know you want like pizza tonight, but your body is like screaming, no, you're going to feel sick if you eat that tonight. Like your body wants something else. So before I order, I tune in and I'm like, how is this going to make me feel in the future? after I eat this. And so I almost try it on. I like imagine eating the thing and I'm like, I'm not getting a yes. Like my body, it feels like a no. And Ooh, then I yeah. like that. Imagine you're eating it and like actually put yourself in that space. Yes. Like that's a good, that's really good. And if I don't listen girl, cause so I have a sweet tooth and it's like, I'm like, Ooh, I want a donut. Like I'm about to start my period. And I'm like, Ooh, when I tune into that, I'm going to be sick. And one time I didn't listen. I was like, eh, I'm going to get the donut anyway. And I was sick after. And I'm like, see, you have to always follow your intuition. <laughs> always. Okay. I have to tell you this because I don't want to derail where you're going. Cause I'm, I'm going to come back to this, but sure, I sure. just recently that's, that's been me. I've been very touch and go with coffee. Yeah. Um, like anytime I'm doing energy work, I never drink any coffee, but like, if I'm just having like a Sunday and I want to go to the coffee shop with Austin or like something, you know, like I, I enjoy a, like a coffee drink. Yeah. And yeah. for a while I was kind of doing like decaf and then I was like, maybe it's the caffeine, but I, I was kind of, I was getting, I was starting to get a no in my body over the last few months. But, and so I really stepped away from it, but not a hundred percent. I was still kind of like, Oh, sometimes I kind of like want it or I kind of miss oh, it or whatever. I love coffee. Oh, I love it. I, I really so I'm like, that's the one thing I won't give up. Take my alcohol, take everything else. You will not be taking my coffee. I said, work around it. Yes. <laughs> As us intuitives, I know I've, I, this is, this has been a full year. I've had not a sip of alcohol, but yeah. I was coffee was kind of my little happy place, but I, my body kept telling me no. And they were getting more like stronger. Like I went to Starbucks and I, I don't go as much as I used to when I lived in Nashville, but I went to Starbucks and I drove home and I was like, Oh, I, I don't feel good at all. Well, you know, and so I'm, I'm Starbucks. I'm I get a no for, I get a no for I, Starbucks. I can't there. There's chemical, a lot of chemicals I feel that have been added into some of their stuff more than usual. So like I get it. I used to be able to drink it. I think I just got more sensitive too. Me too. I think as you up level, your body starts to like, starts really getting a little bit more particular. I'm like, okay, she's really talking about, well, this is what's funny is that like for months it Austin said it so well last night before we got to, we went to bed. He was like, you were saying you needed to stop drinking coffee, but you didn't really know why. Cause I couldn't yeah. really decide if it was the caffeine or what it was. So this past week I went and got my allergy. I got an allergy test. They took my blood and I went to get the results and I was like, I already went into it being like, I'm going to take this information and see if it resonates. I'm not going to allow this yeah. like allergy. Cause you know, I think that sometimes yeah. you can do allergy tests and it might show 50 things you're allergic to. And it's like, okay, let's kind of use our own intuition here too. Like I've heard some people kind of knock the sensitivity test, but okay. for me, I got it back. It was gluten, which I've always been allergic to coffee beans. No. Well, maybe it's the mold. Maybe you had moldy coffee beans. Maybe, you maybe, maybe <laughs> I'm like, I, I, solution here. don't take her coffee. I know. I know. So I was like, but it was so crazy because my body had been telling me no. And then I yeah. get this allergy test really only, I was only allergic to a couple things. It was gluten, coffee beans, um, crab, which I don't really eat much crab. So I was like, that's okay. And then kale, which I do love kale, but yeah, Aww. that was it. Ooh. Coffee. I know. 
so anyways, as you were saying, your, our body really does tell us. And I was a classic example of someone who didn't want to hear it. Yeah. Yes. I knew something was going on. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I want yeah. I just had to tell that story because I really ignored it. Cause I was like, no, I want to keep it. But sometimes our body has a lot more intelligence than we give her credit for. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And we do have to trust that definitely a hundred percent, you know, so I'm so, I'm like going to wear black for you and mourn the coffee. Because <laughs> I'm like, this is a sad day. No, I'm just teasing. There's other things that are good too, but yeah, that's, I don't drink alcohol either. It's very rare. I went four years with not even, not one, not one drink, not Would one, you? we're not ordering one drink. Um, but then I um, decided to ease up a little and like at a wedding, I'll have champagne sometimes only if I check in and it's okay. I had, I went to one of my best friend's weddings in the fall in Santa Barbara and a uh, beautiful wedding. And I was like, I'm not going to drink tonight. And then I got there. I was like, can I have one glass of champagne? And I got a yes. I wasn't hung over the next day at all. So I love yeah. that. Well, could you um, give us a little more specifically when you said like, I'm going to tune in, I'm going to check in, like yeah. say, say, say I'm at a wedding, Amanda, I'm sitting down and I'm like, what does that look like for you? Do you like put your hand on your heart or your stomach or like, what does it, what does it mean? Like give us some details when you tune in. I so for this. me, I just think of the glass of champagne and I imagine drinking it and I'm like, mm -hmm. does it feel light or does it feel heavy? Mm. And I can almost see my future self, like what, how I'm, my body's going to respond to it. So this will be a practice. So start trying because you will trust yourself. You're going to know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I tuned in, like I went to imagine myself drinking it and how that would feel in my body. And it felt light and open. I was like, okay, cool. I'm getting a yes. I love this. I love yes. this because I... I, I think I maybe done that without realizing that I was visualizing myself actually, but I would visualize, like I would kind of go through the process of, yeah. I was the same, like I've had zero alcohol for a whole year. I just recorded this whole, like what it was like for me stepping away from alcohol. And then Austin and I went to Italy and we were at a wedding, same thing. And he's like, he did it with me. So he had yeah. zero alcohol. And, um, but we talked about it before. We're like, we're in Italy. Like we want to experience Italy if someone offers us and we really did. We had people bringing us Italian wine and all these things. Yeah. And, and so I was going through and kind of like visualizing myself in the setting, like having the drink, going through the process of like drinking the drink and then being like, is that really what I want in this moment? Is that really like what I want? Or am yeah. I just kind of being like swept away in this? environment yeah. and it was really interesting because honestly at the time it was like I wasn't I wasn't really ready to fully get back into that so I was kind yeah. of feeling like a little like pulling back and I recorded the podcast being like after a year of not having alcohol and having moments of being like oh I would love a drink right now then there was one sitting in front of me and it was just it was kind of a no <laughs> so yeah because yeah, honestly alcohol is also a depressant so, yeah. you know, it might give you a buzz in the moment, but now like sometimes I'll tune in and I'm like, mm -mm, I'm not getting, I can't, you know, I go out all the time to live music with my friends and I just drink non-alcoholic beers. They know. Yeah. They know. They're I, like, I they'll buy me. They're like, hand me a non, they know non-alcoholic beer or like a tea, <laughs> nice tea. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, do you have any good um, tips or takeaways for anybody that is maybe a little sober curious? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, first of all, when I first got the guidance, I was living in Tampa and I was standing in my kitchen and they're like, you need to stop drinking. And, and I was like, oh, okay, like kind of just start drinking less. And then I just lost my ability to like, I didn't want it all of a sudden. It like, almost like they turned it down for me. So you could always ask, mm -hmm. you could say, you know, if you really decide that you don't want to drink anymore and it's not serving you and you get that guidance for yourself, ask your angels to turn down your desire for it. Mm, they can, that. yeah, give them permission. We can't, we have to ask permission. So they're not going to do it, you know. So turn down your desire for it if it's not for me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember doing that and I just started drinking less and less, which was like a shock to all my friends because I was like karaoke superstar out till three in the morning, like <laughs> the last person to leave parties, honestly. People can't <laughs> picture that now, but I was like, well, you don't really know the real me. Like, I, I, yeah. And so, they, you know, it was shocking. And then I ended up moving to California, like really shortly after, like a few months after that I was guided to move. So 
it was a little bit easier for me to transition from my old identity. I didn't stop drinking completely at that time. It was almost like a, a slow clap out. And then like after six months, I just realized every time I drank, I started feeling like crap. My eyes would get bloodshot after like one glass of wine the next morning. I felt like shit. I felt out of body. And it was because our vibration, when it raises high, 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 it can't handle these lower frequencies. And alcohol is a depressant. It lowers our frequency. And so if you start feeling low, it's because you're lowering your vibration by drinking the alcohol, which there's nothing wrong with alcohol. So it can bring some people up if they're vibrating lower than it. But if you're vibrating higher than that, same goes with weed, same goes with anything else. If you're vibrating higher than that, it's going to lower you. It might bring some people up. It's going to bring others down. So you just got to follow your own gut. Um, but I, you know, what really, when I moved to California is when I really stopped. And this was like six, seven years ago, six and a half years ago. I, I pushed myself to go to a party where I didn't know anyone. And I pushed myself to not drink. And it was really hard for me because I was very, actually used alcohol as a crutch for fitting in and social anxiety because I'm really, really intuitive really sensitive to energy so I can it's intense for me sometimes going out in crowds because I can feel everyone I it's easier for me now because I have the tools but back then I didn't realize that was a part of it and um and I pushed myself through my comfort zone and any anxiety fear stories I had about myself beliefs from my past about it's like identity work a lot of times you know um, I pushed myself through that and I was like, I can go out without this. I don't need this to feel comfortable. And it was really uncomfortable, but I met some of my best friends that night and I'm like, got it. Okay. So like I have to, so I committed to myself. I was like, before you drink anything else again, ask yourself, do I really want this right now? Why am I doing this? And if it's to fit in, if it's to cover up anxiety, cause I was on a journey of mastering like self mastery, you know, um, and part of that is just really following your, and that strengthened my intuition, right? Because I was trusting myself, I was listening to my gut, and that will open your gifts up even more, you know, just by doing that. And um, so, yeah, so I just kept not wanting it every time I checked in. And I was like, I'm not going to tell people I'm sober. I actually don't really like that word for some reason. I don't use that word because I don't really like to put labels on things. I think sometimes it, like, forces us in a box, and then we take mm -hmm. on like the identity of a sober person, like what that means in society. And I'm like, right. I'm just choosing not to drink today, like every day for the, <laughs> you know, I'm not every day. Put a label on, like, I, yeah, I personally don't use the word sober. Um, it feels heavy when I tune in. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to label myself. <laughs> yeah. So, That's, I mean, yeah, I, I, I like sober curious or, um, I am with you on the fact of like, I stepped away from it and I really just had to close the door. So like, yeah. I was really, like, I was in a season of sobriety Yeah. <laughs> um, and then stepping away from it. That's where, kind of where I left off with like my last episode of just being like, if, it, if I feel called to like have a glass of champagne at a celebration and yeah. a check in, it was like a yes, I'm not going to be as strict with myself, yeah. but I was yeah. so, um, so it was so on the fence for a long time that like, there were so many opportunities in my life to drink that I just yes. needed to, it, it needed to close. It's good, for um, you. good that you did that. For me, yes. For me to step yeah. away. But now I'm kind of with you on, on being, I want to be a little bit more loose and gentle and allow myself to check in. Yes. So I really like that practice a yeah. lot. But. And then if you do it, see how you feel after. And if you're like, man, maybe that was just a reminder that I don't want to drink because I feel like shit after. Or maybe you're like, oh yeah, when I check in and it's a yes, then I feel fine after you know? Right. Um, yeah. so yeah, so it's, and it's okay. You can't screw it up and you know, it's really, it's can't. a journey. It's a journey. Really yeah. Can't. Well, I was, what, That's how this opened the door again for me of like letting myself have one once in a while is I was actually at one of my friend's baby showers in Santa Barbara. And I was staying at this really, really beautiful hotel there called the Rosewood. And they, they wheel champagne into every person's room when you get there. And I didn't know that. And they wheeled it in. And I was like, I looked at my friend because she was there with me. And I'm like, I'm going to have a glass today. She's like, I got an intuitive ping on the drive here that you were going to have a glass. And I was like, well, I I am. I'm like, it feels like a yes. They feel like, um, I felt like the guidance was stopping so rigid. And like, yeah, you can break your own rules every once in a while. And it's going to be fine. 
Yes. You know? That's, yeah. That's kind of, um, that was Austin's download too. Yeah. He's super, he's super intuitive. He maybe doesn't like identify or label himself that way, but obviously yeah. for us to have attracted each other, I mean, I'm a big proponent of like attracts like. For sure, <laughs> yeah. So um, he said that he's like, I don't want to be like when we were in Italy, he was like, he had a couple more, he had like a few glasses of wine and I just wasn't feeling super called to it. But he was like, I'm feeling called to be less rigid right now. And I was like, follow that call, baby. Yeah. <laughs> follow it. Because you never yeah. know that could open up stuff and other like completely unrelated things, right? Like maybe me being yeah. less rigid with that opened up for an opportunity to come in or something, right? Because I needed to like loosen my shit up a little. You know, yeah. so, you know, it's tr trusting that too, but again, just getting honest about what the guidance truly is. Yes. In your heart it's, and soul. Yeah. Uh, this conversation is so just meant for me right now too. And I, I feel like a lot of people listening, cause I think everyone's going through a, a, a period, a transition phase in life. That's just like yeah. everyone that's writing into me is just lots of change and transition. And also maybe being a little bit more curious about like, is, is drinking every single weekend serving me? Like j just checking in. I always yeah. want to create a check in point. Like I'm never here to tell anyone that anything is good or bad. Good or bad doesn't exist. It's really just what it is for us as individuals. So this is like yeah. so divinely guided. And I want to just kind of, as we go into the final leg of this conversation, I would love for you to give us a little bit more. I, I know we just like jumped right into everything. I'm like, angels, yay! <laughs> no, I love but, it. but tell us a little bit more how you actually work with them, like a little bit more about your business and how yeah. that shows up with clients and just a little bit more about like just your day to day. Yeah. So a lot of my work, as you can imagine, it's shifted over the years. I've been doing this. I've been taking clients for almost nine years now, nine, 10 years. So I've been doing this for quite some time. And um, I, well, I do train coaches. So I also train people to do the transformational and intuitive work that I do for my clients. So that's part of what I do. Um, but a lot of times people come to me and I take a very limited amount of one-on-one -on -one at this point, but I do still do that just at a higher level. I love getting to do that for a lot of leaders and people of influence, people who have a lot of uh, like a message to share with the world in a greater way, whether it's through their music, whether it's through their voice speaking, whether it's through their product, their service, their CEO of a company, you know, their movies, whatever it is. Um, because there's certain people like you and I that are planted in all of those industries that are here to help change the world. And so they come to me, I can help them be their absolute best. And a lot of people come to me because they want the magic, because they know that I'm a stand for infinite possibilities. They know that I'm a stand for integrity and being our highest self as leaders and being of service. And like through truly through source god anything's possible because i believe in the magic like that i believe we don't have to wait in the same lines as everybody else that like god is our business partner and the angels are an extension of that you know um but we also have to do the inner work right we have to take responsibility for how we're showing up and do the healing and and really uh take care of ourselves and know that it's not all about the physical the external it's about the internal you know the internal it's like they show me this a lot they're showing me the word believe um our when we want to open to a higher realm of possibilities because there are infinite realities and universes we could tap into and create for ourselves in any moment in any area of our life it starts from within us you know like we hold the key inside of our heart through our own beliefs, which we all know, but it's like I had a very vivid dream one night and I was teaching, I was like, belief is your activator, it's your key. And so we have to do the inner work if we wanna create our best damn lives, if we wanna make the best impact we can, if we wanna attract in soulmate love, if we want to do this or that, we have to take a look at how um, we are, like our beliefs are the fibers, the fabric of like the tapestry of our lives, you know? Uh, so like we can shape shift, we can manifest things quickly, we can jump timelines, we can create our own magic. We are responsible for that uh, individually. Uh, so a lot of times my clients are more external, they're more in the hustle, they're more in the left brain what they, who they thought they were and like their identity transforms when they come with me, right? Like they realize life is good, but it's freaking gets to be great. 
it gets to be great. We're not defined by our trauma or our past. Like we're a cosmic being having a human experience. Like let's wake that greater you up. Ah, oh, yeah. yes. That is where I've been. I love that you said like believe and belief because yeah. lately I've been shown so many things that really have, I posted a TikTok the other day about how, um, you know, calories and diet and a lot of that stuff is just a belief system. Like uh -huh. it's, if, if you believe that we, if you believe that your belief system create your reality, that's something that we have just made up as humans. Like that's doesn't exist. If you, yep. if that's not a part of your belief system. And I was like, <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. What you believe about foods, you know, I mean, there's a lot of like, uh, our food industry needs some help. Definitely food does carry yes. a vibration, but also yeah. we can hold the both and with that of like, yeah. if you believe that cheeseburger is going to make you fat, then it's probably going to, you know, yeah. you know, it's probably going to do whatever you give it instructions to do. It is. It really is. Like, that's why I'm like, I talk to my food. I tell people that all the time. They probably think I'm crazy, but I'm like, I, I set the intention with everything I consume and I'm, I'm kind of doing this like research right now or like allowing myself to be the, like, I don't know, the guinea pig and showing people that it can look any type of way. It's we've really put ourselves into these tight boxes and it's all just our belief systems because a lot of what I do in the Akashic Records is help people pull out some of these belief systems that they don't really realize are just running on that yeah, subconscious. It's a program. It is a program. We're yeah. like little laptops. We are little computers. We, we are. need to do a little a little cleanup. Control all and delete. So, <laughs> yes, control all delete. And just as we would, you know, delete the app off our phone and install a new one. Like we can do that. We have the power to do that. It's just so many people don't have this awareness that our belief systems sometimes are just running the show and we don't even know what they are. Yeah. It's like a template that we're operating from, you know, but we can tear that template up and install a new one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We have to believe that. We have to come back to these kind of like basics that really pull us up too. It's important. Yes. What are some of your personal favorite ways that you have altered your belief systems? Like, do you do like a tapping practice or meditation mm -hmm. or like what's something that really lights you up? You know what? I, I never got into tapping. For me personally, it didn't yeah. really work. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's identity work. And I'm like, I try to step outside of my human self. I have all my clients doing this of like, let's just take a high level view and look at how Amanda is living. What stories is she holding about herself from her past that have just been repeating, 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 repeating. And like, look from an outside perspective, you know? And so like just, and really it's like the story of your current reality is all the stories you have, you know? So when I get a client in my experience, I'm like, they're telling me a story. They're telling me a story of what's going on inside, right? Because the universe is like a hall of mirrors. So I'm like, anything they're going through is a story that, and like, that's where we can pull out. It's like, they're telling me what their belief systems are by telling me what's going on in their life right now. You know? Um, so we want to take a look at what all those are and start to start to embody a, a new self really in truth and start to question and just get curious. Like, do I want to believe that? Like the moment you shine a light on these stories, they'll start to move energetically, but you can't believe them anymore, right? Like you have to keep questioning them and start to believe something new about yourself. You know, for example, I'll give a really good example of this is like, I really lacked a lot of confidence as a kid. I couldn't even raise my hand in college. I had this belief I was the shy girl and that was a part of my identity that I was shy, that. People didn't like me or I didn't fit in. And I realized this was a story that was really painful or men, men didn't like me. I couldn't attract good men, but I was successful in my career, very like crushed in my career and, you know, couldn't like men would ghost me and all these things. But I had this belief that I was holding on to again and again, this story, this narrative that I was replaying in my head over and over and over again. And eventually you've got to step outside of that story and say, oh my gosh, I've just been playing this over and over again from my past, you know? And there's healing work we also have to do with this. But another piece that I think sometimes people miss in the spiritual community is the mindset work. It's not just because we can stay stuck in the healing. We need our mind. We need to feed our mind and move it forward. Otherwise we'll stay stuck in the loops and like swimming in our own poo poo for a while, right? Like we have to get up and be like, no, I'm starting to create this new self. 
and I'm going to start to shift that. And it's, it is multi-layered and faceted, but I'll start to create a new vision and I'll start to actually visualize how people respond to me in the new vision. So I would start to visualize like men respecting me. I start to visualize people showing up. I would start to visualize how I wanted people to view me in the new reality. And then I started working, of course, showing up and becoming her. Wow. I'm like, where do I even begin? This is so much, but (laughs) I hope that helps. No, it it was so beautiful. And everything you said resonates. And I even, I have been playing a lot with this concept too, of just really creating new self. And I had this vision where I remembered I went to an acting camp when I was like eight, nine or 10, like young. And I forgot, I totally forgot about that. So I've really been playing in this energy of my guys were showing me this like kind of acting camp because they're like, you write the script, you show up like just as you would a performer on stage, like act as this person. I liked that idea of like, oh, I'm like an acting camp. Like if I was to act as this person, like it kind of became yeah. like a really fun game for me. Yeah, like, like an alter ego oh. almost. Yes. Yes. Have you I have my you? clients naming, naming, I have all my clients name their future self because it yes. helps you step out of your identity. Right. So like for me, like in the past I was given the name Electra because it helped me feel electric and magical and like I it helped me it. feel like confident. I was like, Oh, Electra's going to show up tonight. Not Amanda with all the identity and the old stories I have about myself. So that's a good tool too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> have you, have you ever heard of the book alter ego by Todd Herman? No, but I might need it's, to it, read that. Yeah. It's, it's cool. I mean, you might be super well-versed in the work, but it's a good it's one for good anyone. Listening. Yeah. 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 Um, maybe anyone listening to, I love that book because he works with high level athletes. So it's very, cool. and I love, I love talking about Austin. He's Austin was a football player and then a football coach. And I don't know. I just must, I love, um, combining kind of athletics because they really do a lot of spiritual work. They just don't really know it. Like a lot of confidence hacks and visualization. And so Austin was kind of into it in a more like sports realm, but I do think they're super related for people that are maybe not as spiritual, but curious. It's a really great place to start because you can really see the results that are there. They're out on the field showing up more confident. And so it was really cool. But the book alter ego talks all about how you know naming this this alter ego and like why like what kind of name you should choose and like when you should activate this person and so it's it's a fun concept but for me i've been loving just like acting like i'm in you know acting like if i was in a tv show today and and someone was following me around how would i act yes (laughs) just such a fun activity (laughs) you start practicing too like what that would feel like and then you start manifesting it yeah and it happens so unexpectedly, like so magically. And you're just like, wait, this is fun. <laughs> and it feels good, you know? Yeah. yeah. I've, I also encourage anyone else listening to um, just to manifest things that are, that are fun and happy first. Like yes. I have kind of let go of like, I mean, yes, it's fun to hold a big vision for yourself. But I feel if, you know, the first thing I ever manifested was a free cup of coffee. And I was like, <laughs> wee! And, you know, and there was no, there was nothing to lose. It was just being playful and, yeah. and joyful. And, and like you said, meeting a person or, or, you know, getting a free brunch. Like those are just such fun places to start that really just validate your, your guidance is there and pick things. Like even when I'm acting, I act like I like to pick different characters and just because it's fun and just to try it on and see how it feels, you know, yeah. um, not getting so locked into this arm wrestle of the outcome. It's just like being the most playful version of myself I can be. I love this. Yes. Speaking to my soul. <laughs> I love the play. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, yes. it, it makes well, it easier to manifest stuff too in that vibration. Cause there's no resistance. You're just in play. 100% also too. I, now that I know that you're an earth angel, I love, that. I'm like the angel realm, which I feel the Akasha hurts to me is the angelic realm too. And they're always like, you guys are so serious, play, have fun. We, yes. it's supposed to be happy. And so I feel that's kind of naturally the energy that I've always embodied. So, um, I love to see a kindred spirit. You're like also in the play energy too. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. I identify a lot with like the stars and like a galactic, I feel like I'm a galactic angel. <laughs> yes, me too. Yes, cosmic. Yes. Cosmic. Cosmic. Cosmic angel. Yeah. Cosmic angel. You got some warrior um, energy though too. 
I do. I feel like you're like badass, like. Thank you. Yeah, powerhouse. I receive that. Yeah. Well, Amanda, is there anything else? Thank you so much. This conversation just made me so happy and just brought so much sunshine to my day. And I hope everyone listening felt that too. Is there anything else that's on your heart? And also please tell us where they can find you and just all of the things. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, if you want to welcome the angels in, I have like, I forgot, I have like a free six or seven minute welcome in the angels meditation. And so I'll send you that to give to your people. um, Please. Because... Yeah, it, it'll just help you to welcome them into your day and like get on that vibration. Because the more you yeah. raise your vibration up, you'll be able to communicate with them and, and feel them more. It's not like we have to be happy in every moment, but like when you right. do tune your vibration, it you'll notice more signs and synchronicities show up. So that will help you too, to call them in. So that you can have yes. cool synchronicities and straight up freaking miracles that you did not try to control. Like me meeting that person on my yes. birthday birthday gift from the universe. Hey, (laughs) I'm so excited. I can't wait to try the meditation. Yes. Please send it it my way. I'll link it in the show notes too. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you can find me on Instagram. So I'm mainly there. I'm also on TikTok and my handle is at the Amanda Merritt, M-A-R-I-T. Yes. TikTok was how I found you. So it's a really fun, I love, I really enjoy your TikTok. And just on behalf of AG University, thank you so much for all of your wisdom and everything you shared today. This was such a good conversation. I can't wait for everyone to hear it. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. As always, I just wanted to say thank you so much for tuning in. If you feel so called or if it feels aligned, I would love for you to leave me a review here. I always love reading your beautiful thoughts and messages. And also you can find me at Anna Grace Newell on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And I will link all of my courses, AG University course curriculum in the show notes, along with if you're interested in booking an Akashic Records reading with me, my scheduling link goes out in my newsletter. It goes out once a month and it's completely free. I would love to have you there. As always, I'm a proud professor and you get an A plus for making it all the way through the end. Love you.